Good morning. You join us here at Create and Craft on a Sunday, which can only mean one thing. Jenny Raymond and the quilting classroom is coming up. But before that, I'm going to just remind you that you do join us as part of our postage event, our half price postage event, which sees you paying half price postage for absolutely every product during the event. Anyone who does purchase during the event will be automatically entered into a draw to win £250 into their Create and Craft account or $250 if you're shopping from the USA and there'll be a prize to each country. Jenny Raymond. Hello. Oh, you're here at last. We're here. Oh, all that Thank you so much coming for letting us have, have your quilt. Quite. Obviously, you, you know, Quite. we well, were researching you, you, it last night. Yes, and you, you went home with it and snuggled up underneath it, I assume. That's why he there needed the rouge this morning. There was no yeah. snuggling. Yeah. Uh, now, oh, what, Jenny, a pity. what a pity. I know. Yeah, I know. No action for me. Now, um, Jen, you are, you've, you've, <laughs> don't know why I said that. <laughs> Tell you something, there's been action from me. <laughs> Come on. Right. This morning, we have some extremely nice templates to show you. We well, have that, Jen, can, we just, can we just introduce you oh, as right, a quilt right, right, yes. All of those <laughs> might not know who you are. <laughs> Who are you, Jenny Raymond? You are, right. You're, you're okay. huge I'm, in the sewing I, world. I'm the world's only twiddler, fiddler, nipper, chucker, manipulator and manoeuvre of material. You see, I go round the world. In fact, this very Sunday, I was in Rochester, New York, teaching were you? the Genesee Quilt Guild. Before that, thank you. Before that, I was with Ladies of the Lakes in New Hampshire, teaching them, you see, ace. Um, so, you know, USA, Brill, back at, uh, in September at Paducah, so that'll be great again. So I travel around the world, clap, 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 they don't know where Paducah is. Um, they do it when the other one says. Well, quite. Uh, so that t I teach patchwork quilting, but mainly I'm a twiddler and fiddler. But on Create and Craft, I'm allowed to play with the templates, the glues, the fusibles, the waddings, the battings, the materials, and it's fantastic. And we've got it all today, Jenny. We have haven't it all we? today. Yep. We've got it all today. So we're going to show you. So obviously, Jenny knows her stuff, but we are very confident that Jenny Raymond is going to teach you so much during this hour. Jen, we've got the, the templates and the shapes. We've got some things that I've never seen you bring yes. us before, yes. actually. We have some very different things. Should we start right. at the very okay. beginning? Very quickly. We have a bundle here of two templates. One is the Simplicity 30 degree triangle, which with some white paper behind. Let us use this. And this is a extremely useful template, not only for making, obviously, 30 degrees, 12 of them put together make a circle. You'll see some samples of that later. But it makes really easy bunting. ba -dum, bunting. In case they can't get the bunting. Or it's a banner in the USA. Oh, did they call it yes, a banner? Yes, okay. banner very Makes sense. With it comes the hexagon. And the hexagon is just one of those extremely useful templates. So if you haven't got a hexagon and you fancy making some buntings, this bundle is for you. You could use this with quilting as well? Oh, of course you can do. I mean, it's Fun. a basic So it's not just shape. for those two things? No, 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 no. This is a classic shape, the hexagon shape. Not quite certain why these bundles have been put together. But if you, in fact put 12 of these together you would make a shape that is a 12-sided shape which is, works in much the same way as do hexagons so it does sort of fit together oh brilliant okay 405996 is your item code great price tag for you if you're in the club of 13 pounds and 49 pence now this right. one now, this is, is the here. nine patch okay isn't it? it's an uneven nine patch and it makes a specific design the design information comes on the little label that comes with it but i've used this for making a quilt pattern which is behind us the christmas one which is there and indeed oh, this was one of the classrooms that ran some time before at christmas time so your shape works actually like this here does it give you the seam allowance then it as well? It does indeed. It also was used for the quilt we have hanging beside me, where I used it for the C. This was oh, last see, year's yeah, yeah. strippy, stripy story quilt. That's lovely. But I'm using it these days to create a curved edges on my quilts, as I will show you, because oh. it's a rather nice curve. So if you want so a on the edges? edge, yes, just oh, draw lovely. around the arc. So that's a really good template to have, not only from a piecing point of view, but as an arc to your quilt. So if you want scalloped edges, go for that one. Righto. Uh, so let's have a look at the price tag. 290420 is your item code. If you are a member of the club, that's just 899. You've got it for life. You can use it over and over and over again. Uh, next one is the circle right, and the heart. And the heart. Okay. Circles you've got here, a selection of circles going up in sizes. Now, this is one of those templates you just have to have because you can never find a plate the right size. This will do your quarter circles and your half circles. Great for your Dresden plates, mariner's compass, circles in general. You can also just do parts of circles. You can play. It's a really good design tool. A heart is one 
one of the most complex things to do, particularly when it's large. You can do little hearts quite easily, but larger hearts, it tends to get a bit out of proportion. And this gives you five different heart shapes. And you could just literally take a heart and turn it into a bag, as you'll see when we come to the binding part of the show. So the heart and the half circle, well, the circle, but it will make a half, half circle as well, at £26.99. And you've got all of the different sizes on there, Jen. Correct. So this is probably an essential, isn't it? It is an essential. I mean, I use this one constantly. This one pretty frequently when I want a heart. I want to do some applique. It also makes a really neat sort of little sachet. If you want to put two hearts together, stuff it with lavender, potpourri, something like that. Neat little sachet. Great little gift. Oh, lovely. 268158 is your item code for that one. We're whizzing down the line. And these are all the products that Jen's going to be using today so if you if you want them they're all on the website you can shop ahead uh, Jen will be taking over the hour very very soon and um, we're giving you a classroom in quilting uh, next right. up Dresden plate template we've had many many times before but I'm using it in a slightly different way as an edging for the quilt they'll have to keep watching to see how it gets used and believe you me you need the circle cut when you're doing the Dresden plate to make the center arcs ah. so keep watching folks because you'll see how I've used the Dresden plate for the edging of a quilt so grab it now to avoid disappointment. 207592. 719 is your item code. Now, this is something I've never seen. Uh -huh. This is fusible, fusible bias, bias binding. tape. Yep. Right, what this does is you just take my extract my piece from this part. Oh wow. This sticks. Now when you're doing something like Celtic or stained glass, there is no longer the need to tack it down. You can stick it down. Look how neat it is. And it's wonderfully neat and it's wonderfully easy. I am a fan. Okay, so we get to give a PDF away with the quilting classroom, and I know I've done this design before, and I had to tack it in place. I've redone it, and all I had to do was iron the stuff, because it's fusible. And it'll stay on there forever. It stays on there. It is great for covering raw edges. You can use it in dressmaking. You can use it anywhere you want to cover a raw edge or create a design. It's biased. It stretches. It flexes. It's amazing. It's fusible. And you get... How, how long is this? Five metres yes. long in the yep. gold and the same in the black. In the black. That's br a brilliant yep. idea. Really, is it really, a fairly really new good. idea, that one? Um, it's not been around that long, but basically how it comes is on the back of the um, tape, there is a fusible piece of paper. Now, I know you could ah. make your own bias. I know you could glue bits of paper to the back oh, of it. Oh, how fiddly would that why? be, though? When you just need to peel the paper off and press it in place? No, fantastically. Oh, so you peel the paper off, yep. then you press it. Indeed, you will see. Fantastic. Thank you so Watch much. A great price on that for 10 metres of it as well. 406007 is your item code. If you're a member of the club, £13.49. Ha ha. This is spray. This is spray on fusible glue. And I've, so I've, no need to tack? No, no. You, you, you can use it for applique. You just spray it on the back of your fabric, press it to material and it's done. It's fuses. It's like using Bond Web or one of those other webs. Yeah. But you don't have to have the paper. You just spray. So you can be more precise then of where it goes. You can be more precise. You don't have the problem with letters because you can cut the letter out. You've not got to worry about when you put things on the back, you have to design the wrong way round because you peel the paper off, comes out backwards. This is just spray and go. I came across it about, oh, six weeks ago. We had it on a show. We Ooh. sold out. Uh, it is a super product. It I is just it. a spray on glue. And if you don't use it immediately, the fabric is still remains. It dries and you can still use it. You just iron it on. Oh, Fantastic. This is one of those little life hacks. Grab yes. that one, 404777. Yep. Uh, fairly recent discovery from Jen, this one. 899 is your price tag if you're a club member. So what's this right, one now, This here, is then? the same company. This is 505, and an awful lot of people use 505 for their quilt basting. It's not the same sort of product for this. This is for applique, mm -hmm. fusing. This is for quilt basting, quilt tacking, where you're going to bond the layers together to hold them lightly enough so they don't shift when you quilt. We don't think we've had this on the show very often. It's a very popular item. A lot of people like to use it. It is a spray. Just follow the instructions and remember to spray lightly. And do check that where you are spraying, you've got a well ventilated area and nobody has any problems. It is a glue spray, but it's great. 406010 uh, is your item code for that one, seven pounds and 19 pence. Now, let's run very quickly through all these wonderful black yes. waters that but you've got. Long last, we have some blenders. Blenders are materials that will are plainish that will blend in with all sorts of colours. Ah, so you've got um, heavily patterned ones. You, you don't want, want to mix too no, many patterns you because together. you then lose the design. So we've got some blenders. I have waited for this company to bring out blenders for a long time, and they brought out three different sets of blenders: pure cotton, uh, fat quarters they are, and they come in some really neat shades. So the first one has your purple, blue, turquoise, a grey, blue, and a grey in it, and that Jenny is for the amazing price of. 
It is the amazing price of eight ninety nine if you're in the club. Next colour option, same Next, but different. Yeah, this is this is fabulous. This is that wonderful green, yellow, a tanny colour brown, shocking pink, and red. Great. I mean, you just need to have them all. And again, the same price. Eight ninety nine if you're a club member. And then the softer colours. So these are sort of the more useful ones for when you're really stuck. You've got a grey, you've got a green, you've got a brown, you've got beige and that all important black. Brilliant for doing the more masculine projects, but also, as you say, perfect blenders. You just need them all because you, you, they, they work with mix and match with so they many They mix together, don't yes. they, as well? Yes. 405690 is your item code for that one. Don't forget, it is half price, price postage as well. Now, this reminds me almost of like a Liberty yes. print. Right, this is called Bloomsbury, and I really, really, really like I this really one. I really like that one. The Dresden plate design, which you'll see through the show, uses this particular fabric, and it was an absolute treat to have something that was a little different, subtly unusual, that blended and just worked together. Just you wait till you see what I've done with that. I'm really quite chuffed. I, I really love those colours. And again, they'd work with the blenders because you can well look at the oranges. I the use the red there. with it, I use mm. the tan with it, I've used the purple with it, etc., etc. So it works. Works really well. I love that uh, print. £8.99 pence is all you're paying as a club member. Next up, really soft, subtle yes. pastel colours. This is sort of spring. This is young and fresh. This is sort of, you know, the start of the day. Very, very nice. Again, pretty colours, pretty fabrics, the same quality cotton, fat quarters, and again, some lovely shades, which of course would mix and match with some of your blenders in probably this particular pack would go very nicely with it too. Eight pounds and ninety-nine pence. Three six three zero seven seven. Uh, these are a little bit different. No, I, I want you to make something with these. I just haven't had the time. I came back from the states. The fabrics arrived a day later. I've had to work this week. There wasn't time. Those are five-inch squares. It's a charm pack. There are fifty of them in all those colours. It will make a piece. I think I worked it out. Four foot six by four foot six. If you stitch them all together. So you've got, uh, no, it's 100, sorry. It's 100 five-inch wow. pieces, which is wow. four and a half inches when you've done, and there it is. And I could make what with these? Well, you could make a quilt top if you sew them together, four foot six by four foot six. It's wow. a bit shorter than me in both directions. Crikey, that's a big quilt, that is. For a, that a <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, it, I mean, for what you're getting yes, with yes. the... No, you're tiny, obviously. Um, but I'm, like, that's yes. more than so I it thought is, it would be. It's about that, mm. that size. It's generous. Yes, it's generous. Very generous. So if you're really stuck for an idea, and the nice thing about it, it's been pinked around the edge so it doesn't fray. Okay, you get the fluff comes off it, but it doesn't fray. So if you're a beginner and you want a project or you've got to go on holiday and you want to take something with you, why don't you go and sew some squares together and have fun sitting on the beach with some stitching? £31.49. and pence. Four zero one six four nine. That's nearly quarter past. So we're going to be very quick running right, through okay. these because it is fabulous, time to fabulous the fabrics. Fabrics. Um, I've been Ooh. using this particular bundle, the Orient Sunset Mix, but these are really, really super. They are half meters of some fabulous, fantastic fabrics. Um, absolutely cracking. You stay there, Jenny. Let me get one of mine to show the viewers how big they, you actually get the piece. I mean, this is one of my favorites, and I deliberately haven't used it because I'm saving this for something special. Oh, that special. is beautiful. You've got, like, bonsai trees on yes, there. Yes, I know. It's sort of Japanese-y, Eastern-y, yet it's not. And then you get... So it's double of that. Double wow. That. Per, per piece. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. All so right. let's run through the options very, very quickly. You've got four different options. Um, now, this one here is midnight. Then you've got the grey. Then berry. Then sunset. Uh, sunset's the one that Jen's got. 401. 646 is your item code. pounds and £0.99. Do have a look on our website because there are lots of options for you on there. Um, right. I, the, Quick right. look. Now, the reason for this book is here is it's got how to finish off your quilts and things in. Okay. And that's what we're going to be looking at. So it's an interesting book. It's by Karen Hellaby, and it's got a lot of how you finish off your quilts in it. So that's that little one. And that's Karen's. The next one right. along. Uh, do you know this lady? Uh, yes. Now, the reason why this is here, we <laughs> haven't had it on the show for ages, but we happen to have an overlocker on the show. We do. And many people don't know how to use their overlocker. This will take you through the easy ways of using your overlocker and give you a whole load of projects that you can do on your overlocker because an overlocker wraps an edge, it will not sew across the middle. So this book has lots of projects and lots of ideas plus a whole load of very silly stories about travel and how you lost my or how I lost my knickers in Kidderminster and my teeth down the laboratory in Chicago and various other things like that. Passing on. I've got no words. I've got no words, Jen. Um, 
I, th I feel like we should go on holiday together and document <laughs> it, like, see what happens, because I think it would be really funny. Uh, this is Jenny Raymond's book, so you know it's going to be fantastic. And then, Jen, you've, you've got the penguins in this one. I yes. love those and penguins. And again, these are here, because this one gives you ideas to do with your hexagon, and this one will give you ideas about binding. And indeed, this one has various binding suggestions in this as well. So these are finishing techniques that I'm going to be looking at in the classroom fairly shortly. Just useful books. They're fun, silly things, and silly ideas to do with fabric. 385835 for both books, 1619. I think it's a really great gift. Now, we do have the um, overlocker and we have other goodies. Uh, the tape, the tape do the break. Tape. Yes, this is the 25 millimeter bias binding tape maker, which is great for making tape for doing your bunting very easy. All you do is feed the fabric through iron as it comes out the other end, or indeed for making the bindings on your quilts. Ah, that's what it does. That's what it's for. You see, you feed it in one end and it comes out the other. What, all a nice shape? Yes. And you just, yes. oh, how clever is that? It, over. it is pretty clever, that. Really picture. clever. Uh, good price as well, at £8.09 and nine pence if you're in the club. Uh, the overlocker, we've got the Singer overlocker for you here. Uh, now, full details of the Singer overlocker are on the website. It does, of course, come with a two-year warranty. Now, this is a very good price tag for an overlocker. It's only £314.10 £10 if you're in the club. We're giving you full flexi payments. So today you would pay £78.53 oh. plus half price postage, even though it's a heavy machine. You're not going to pay any more than £149 postage. So, Jen, for an overlocker, I've seen overlockers for £1,000. Yes, so what is the great thing about an overlocker oh, is the fact that it actually sucks down and it doesn't move. Because one of the things about overlockers is when you're going at the speed they go up, and they really go and go much faster than sewing machine, is they can walk all over the table. This is the way for your dressmaking. This is the way for finishing things off. I use the overlocker when I want to put it on the edging on a quilt. I will whip round it with the overlocker just to, before I bind it, gives it a nice firm edge. So it really does help. Um, so I like this as an edging technique for my quilts. I obviously like it to make very quick projects with. But overlockers are easy to use once you grasp the threading up and the singer does thread up remarkably well the colored threads come through and they come threaded up to begin with little tip remember the tying off trick so when you want to put the next thread on tie your thread to here and gently pull, pull it, it through, through the system through. and rather than I'm sorry jenny when you when you're not finished with flicking it completely it. off the machine <laughs> Um, when you have got it through the system, rather than doing what is known as chaining off, yeah. is if you actually turn the wheel backwards, it'll break the chain, then you can just pull the threads through and you can watch the loopers, the knots on the loopers coming through the system and out the back in safety before breaking. Oh, Works fantastic. So, you know, so this is a nice, easy overlocker to nice, use. Easy, good solid. Different and to a it, cover stitch. As we proved it, it doesn't move. It doesn't it's stuck suck down, right it, down. It's right down. Very, very good price tag on that one today. £314.10. And ten pence. Now we're going to leave Jenny to uh, get get started on your classroom. And I know you've been waiting for it. So please carry on shopping on the website for all of the goodies that Jen is using. Anything that you see Jen using, it will be on the website. So have a look for it. Create and craft dot com is uh, is the website to go to. So Jen, are you ready? I am indeed. Take yes. it away, girl. Thank you kindly. Oh, right, quilting class it hasn't been one for a wee while and this week, believe you me, this week has been absolutely rushing around from here, there and everywhere. Coming back from America on Monday, uh, Monday afternoon lecture to the Tandridge Handicraft Group, Tuesday working, Wednesday working here doing the Golden Rule, Thursday I caught up with myself, Friday I went off to the West Country to prattle and teach all day yesterday. So the quilting classroom is a little bit sort of hurried or flustered, forgive me. What I wanted to go through was, and I know I showed this on one occasion when we had this marvellous glue on the show, was this thing called Brodery Purse. Now, with the Quilting Classroom, you do get a PDF, and you can download the PDF. Either you can download it on the website, or you can download it from social media. It is in various places. This PDF is for you to use, but be aware it is brief notes. All right, I'm not writing a book. I'm just giving you hints and a few tips. And I have to confess, this is possibly a little more hurried than they usually are. Right, beginning with Brodery Purse. Brodery Purse is the action of taking one design from one piece of fabric and putting it elsewhere. The name for Brodery Purse comes from way back 
olden days, many, many, many years ago, long before even I was born, where the ancient Persians had most wonderful embroidered robes. And the robes would get tatty around the bottom, but the embroideries were still okay. So they would take the embroidery, broderie, and cut it from that robe and put it onto another one. And the purse comes from Persia because that was the country where it came from. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today, is we're going to be taking not necessarily an embroidery, but a something from one place in the fabric world and putting it elsewhere. And this is usually done by taking a motif out of a piece of fabric. And here I've got that wonderful Orient fabric because it had a most lovely motif on it. Now, you can have a choice. You can either choose to cut the motif out and spray the back of it with 606, or you can actually spray the fabric. Sometimes I spray the fabric, as I did on the show before, simply because it's slightly less messy. And it also means that if I suddenly change my mind when I'm cutting out and want to cut out a bit more of the design, there is glue already there on the back. But basically how the glue works is you just simply spray it on. Give it a quick shake and spray it on. Now, if you are going to cut these things out individually, please will you mask the area that you are using with some form of paper. It is a spray glue, and it does stick pretty well. If you're just going to spray the fabric, again, take care. This is a glue, and just be careful how you do it. So all one would need to do, and I'm going to spray the fabric rather than spend time cutting it out, particularly in the studio, they don't want glue everywhere, is simply put a few squirts of the spray wherever you feel you wish to cut out the motif. This is literally like a spray-on fusible glue web. Once you have sprayed it on the relevant area, you then cut out the relevant area, and it's going to be stuck onto something. Now, if you're going to have a design and position it exactly in the center of a piece of work, it would pay you to press the square you're going to use in half north and south, west and east, and in half on the diagonals, because that will give you the chance to center your design exactly in the middle, as I've done here. Once you cut out the main motif, you may well want to cut out other pieces and just continuing layering them up. I've just put a few pieces on here, but on this finished design, we have a whole load more shapes that I have added. Now, the shapes are going to be held in place, firstly by the glue, which does stick them on pretty well. It doesn't come off very well at all. This can be bonded in place with something as simple as your clover iron, or indeed the regular iron. Once you've got the whole design bonded together, then it is up to you as to how you choose to stitch over the raw edges. You may choose to do a buttonhole stitch, or you may choose to do, as I've done, satin stitching. Now, if you're going to do satin stitching, the main thing to make very certain of is that you put something underneath the fabric to stop it from buckling. If you satin stitch literally through just these two layers of material, you're going to get the fabric buckling. You could use a stabilizer, or you could use something as simple as a sheet of paper. The sheet of paper will go underneath the work, and you will set your machine to do satin stitching. Sometimes I use regular paper, or in the samples that I have here, I've just used a piece of baking parchment. When you come to build the design up, you're going to be building the design up by working from the back of the design. So whatever is underneath gets done first. So these leaves are underneath these roses. So I do the background leaves first, because when I come to do the roses on top, this seam will go over the raw edge of the stitching that is there and cover it up for me. So the progress of work is to work from the back to the front. So I will do the background leaves, and then I would do the rose that's underneath, and then I would do that rose, and then I would do that rose. Paper on the back, don't panic about it, because as you work the stitching, it just literally tears away, be it regular paper or be it baking parchment. And you gradually achieve the edges of the design completely covered up. Now, without doubt, to do it all in one color, obviously, is considerably easier. It saves changing threads, and it does give it an outline. Slightly trickier to do, because if you wobble a bit, then your black outline might not look quite as good as that more toning thread that just will conceal any little meanderings from the chosen path. So consider your thread color. Put something on the back to stabilize it. 
but it's satin stitching I wanted to mention to you. And I've got here the Singer machine, which I've set up to do satin stitching. When you're going to be doing satin stitching, this is where you're into fine tuning of your stitch length. And indeed, you need to consider your stitch width. You don't want to have it too wide and you don't want to have it too narrow. If it's too wide, it covers things up. And if it's too narrow, you won't go over the raw edge. You will need to put on your applique or satin stitch foot. This will be a foot that will have a cutaway bit at the back. Turn the foot over and you will see that it actually has a cutaway bit on the back. Let me take this one off and see if we can get the camera to home in and see the cutaway section at the back. It's not flat there. It's actually cut away. And this foot should not be used for regular piecing because if you use it for regular piecing, then sadly, it will not feed the fabric through properly. So use it only for your satin stitching because of that cutaway bit at the back. It pays before you begin to do a test. And I would always do a test down perhaps the edge of my piece of work, working on the same sort of setup, i.e. a bit of paper and the fabric. Now, I've already set this machine up, so I've set it up for about halfway along the length of the stitch width. So it's about three to five on the stitch width, and it's round about 0.5 on the stitch length. Now, your satin stitch setting, so she's getting her teeth all wrong, will depend upon the size of needle you're working in, the fabric you're working in, your thread, your machine, and it really is fine tuning. Drop the needle down to begin with, and then you're going to be setting off. And as you can see, it's doing a nice close together satin stitch. If you can achieve a close together satin stitch, then that is fine. And if the machine does that by itself, you know any deviations from that are probably down to you. Once you're going to get going, the idea is, is to do your satin stitching midway over the raw edge. So let me just pull a bit of paper off there and move the paper to the middle. So I will endeavor to get the raw edge of my fabric in the center of the foot so that as I'm doing my stitching, and I'm deliberately doing this in black so you can see where I'm sewing, it's going into the fabric and over the edge, into the fabric and over the edge, into the fabric and over the edge. So it's covering that edge. Once you've got your eye in, you want to up that machine to its highest because you actually get a better stitch out of it if you really run that machine good and fast. Now, I'm going around the edge here. I haven't paid any attention as to where I technically should start. But this piece is just to show you how you can get round. So in, off, in, off, keep your foot flat down. And this is giving you a nice line of satin stitch all the way around the edge. Now, if you find it's not close enough, then you can just take it down by literally the smallest, smallest amount. So if it's parted a little, then take it down a bit. And again, keep that pressure up. Keep the speed going. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to run off with you. And there we have your satin stitch over the edge. So when you're doing something like broderie purse, you're going to be anchoring it down using that rather nice glue. Put the layers down, layer it all up, and then literally work your way round with the stitching. So when I did this, I did the pieces that were at the back first, these sections, and then I did the bit that came on top and finally finished it off with those little pieces. This was then mounted onto one of the fabrics, those rather lovely brights that we've got, the blenders, and then I bound it with another blender. You could, of course, be a little bit more artistic with your broderie purse. And here we have, should I turn it that way around? We have a bowl of flowers. I know I did this quite some time ago and I had to use a different method of fusing. I didn't have this stuff. That makes it seriously easy. And here I put the bowl down first and then layered the flowers on top and then worked it with a satin stitch by working the bowl first and then doing the various flowers behind it. You don't have to use your broderie purse techniques for something like a cushion or something like a quilt. Why not consider doing it on a garment? And on this little dress here, which I only wear on very rare occasions when I'm feeling very brave, it was such a boring looking dress that I've added various flowers that I've cut out from a piece of curtaining to round the hem of the dress and indeed on the bodice. So you could consider using the idea of broderie purse in a variety of different ways. That's using a fusible glue. But what if we wanted to do something like the stained glass and using that lovely tape, the So Easy Bias Tape? This is a bias tape with a fusible on the back. 
Now, the particular design that you've got on your PDF, I have done before. And those were in the days when it was done by tacking it. And if you look very carefully at the pictures, you can see that I have actually used some tacking stitches. And that, I have to confess, took me blooming ages to tack it all down. But you don't have to now. You can actually do it by sticking it, because this stuff sticks. Now, in the PDF, there is more than enough words there on how you actually create the design. But I just wanted to remind you of the little trick, and also just show again how you come to fuse it. When you are fusing it, just simply peel the paper off the back. There's a bit of paper to come off the back there. Don't peel off yards and yards. Only take off what you want. This is the glue side. If you peel off yards and yards, you're running the risk of either getting it the wrong way up or not, um, or getting it sort of stuck or into something else. And then just simply using something like the clover iron, and please don't do it on your cutting mat, just literally massage the tape down with small movements and that will stick in place. Also stick in place to the cutting mat as well because that's got a bit of glue on it. And that's how easy it is to put on. Because it's on the bias, it will actually go round in a circle. So peel it off as you go. Let's go round, make a wiggle. I'll tell you what, why don't I cut that bit off and do another wiggly bit? That would be much more sensible. So let's do a wiggle. So taking the tape to show how easy it goes down, just massage it down. And it will go round and round and round. And you can see that I can bend it round in a circle and just take it round, really, a tight curve. So the tape can be stuck down. You will have to stitch it down afterwards. But the trick I wanted to make you aware of is that when you are doing Celtic, is remembering to tuck the last end underneath the first end. So if I just take this out here for a bit, you can see where this end, which was the final end, has been tucked under to meet the beginning end. So it's just literally been tucked up inside there, where I will then stitch it down and finish the design off. So that's how you do it when you're doing the Celtic work, is you go roundy, 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 under, over, under, over, remembering that you must leave a space to tuck this little bitty underneath so it meets up with his friend. And you can, of course, use this tape for all sorts of things. So you could use it for something like stained glass. I'm now firmly attached to that. Stained glass could be done, and here we have a piece of stained glass with colour added, and I've actually put some padding underneath it. Why not, if you're searching for inspiration, think about cutting out hexagons and instead of satin stitching over the edges, you could actually use your bias tape and tape over the edges. And it was looking at this, I thought, hey, I've just come up with a new idea and a new way of using hexagons. And the piece has got raw edges. I really can't be bothered to turn the raw edge under. Why don't I simply cover the raw edge up using a strip of the bias? And it worked remarkably well. So you could think about using this strip for your Celtic design, your stained glass window design. You could even just take squares of fabric, cut them up, and put them together, if we look at the gaily colored piece behind me, and lay bias binding down in between the cracks to make a crazy piece of sort of stained glass window. So very useful are that is that particular product. But I did promise to talk about quilt finishing. So let me move all these pieces out of the way for the moment and just dump them in the time on the way on the floor. When it comes to quilt finishing, there are a variety of ways of finishing off quilts, from doing it with bias binding, to doing it with straight edge, to doing it with double fabric, to doing it with single fabric. I decided I wanted to play with one of the materials and come up with an interesting edge to actually explain to you how it gets bound. This is using that lovely fabric that we've got on the show and indeed the Dresden plate template. And I've made an arced edge to the design. And the design was made by creating Dresden plates by taking literally, let me move this out the way then we can see, a three and a half inch wide strip of fabric and watch carefully how I've got the template positioned. I've got the template positioned so the four inch line is on my three and a half inch strip of fabric. You could have a four inch strip, but it just wasted a bit of material and this was too nice to waste. Cut out the various sections 
and the sections simply get joined together and you join five of them together. Personally, I like to press the seams open and flat because I think you get a better finished effect. That gives you the arc or a quarter of a Dresden plate. It's a grandmother's fan. To finish off the arc, you're actually going to need a quarter circle. And that is where the template, the circle cut template, was remarkably useful. Because you could cut out a quarter circle from here, or indeed a half circle, which will give you the template to make the rest of the fill in the hole in the Dresden plate. So if we look at the panel I've got here, here are my Dresden plates, and there are my quarter circles filling it in. On the corner here, I've got two of these stitched together, one, two, and you need a half circle. You can tell from the drawings and the photographs that I've done how I piece the thing together. You basically make up the center block and you add onto the center block one Dresden plate with a square that's been cut into four quarter squares. Please, can we have quarter squares rather than half squares? It simply keeps the grain going correctly. Having stitched that section onto each of the four sides, it was just a question of finishing it off with half a Dresden plate on the corners. So that gave me an interesting edge. But when you're going to actually layer your quilt, this is where the 505 glue I found was very useful for bonding the layers together. Any quilt sandwich is going to consist of a backing fabric, some form of wadding. The wadding can be whatever wadding you happen to choose. We've got some excellent waddings on the show. Cut the wadding a little bit bigger than your quilt top. Cut your backing fabric bigger than that. Layer them and glue the layers together with your 505 unless you wish to do some other particular method. You could tag it together. You could even use the micro tag gun. We've had that on the show as well. So the quilt top is layered up. What I suggest you do before you go any further is do the quilting you wish to do on the middle of it. But before you bind the edge, you need to sew round the outside edge, either by hand or with the walking foot or do it with the free motion foot. Don't do it with the regular foot because if you do it with the regular foot, you will get creep. So anchor the layers together before you bind them. Now, before I come to binding that, let's just work our way through just basic binding. So over here we have my mock quilt. So I've layered the mock quilt up, as you will layer it with the top, the wadding, and the back. And these have been bonded together. What I would then do is sew around the outside edge. Now, this was a panel made up by stitching squares together. If you use those fabulous squares you've got on the show, you could achieve much the same. And I've stitched around the edge to hold it together. And I'm going to bind this in a moment. But before I come to binding it, let me just show you what you could do to it. Rather than have such a boring straight edge, it occurred to me I could take the uneven nine patch and actually draw a line along the edge of the quilt, an arc shape. And I thought, ah, oh, yeah, but what if it's not the right length? And the answer to that is draw one arc one side of the quilt, one arc the other side of the quilt, and then fill the middle bit in. And this is going to give you a wonderful scalloped arc. Round this end of the quilt, because it wasn't long enough to do it twice, I drew one arc and another arc and overlapped them. And that is how, with the uneven nine patch, which I know we've used before, you could achieve a wonderfully rounded edge to your quilt. So your quilt could have straight edges, it could have rounded edges. Straight edges are not a problem to bind, it's the rounded edges that actually are. If you're going to bind a straight edge, then the way you're going to bind a straight edge is very simple. Cut that thread off there. You need a straight cut strip of fabric. You only need to cut your fabric on the bias if you're actually having anything that is rounded. So a straight cut strip and the strip has to be cut from one side to the other. Do not cut it down the fabric, it'll be too tight, but it must be cut across the fabric from weft to white. I would suggest you join them together with a straight seam because it actually shows less, although there are arguments for joining it with a bias seam because when you fold it over, you spread the bulk of the seam. 
you will find how you actually do this binding in both Karen Hellaby's book and indeed in the Stitch Bits book. But I'm going to do it on the back because you'll probably see it a little bit easier to do. Using a straight strip of fabric, put it with the wrong side of the fabric to the front of the quilt. To the machine, and this is where you want to put your regular foot on. I'm just going to keep this foot on for the moment to save changing the feet. Be aware that whatever size of seam allowance you do will actually be your finished binding. So I'm going to go back to the straight stitch on this machine and I'm going to move my needle over to the far side. I'll do. I'll move the needle to there. I'll keep the needle at that space. And using a straight stitch, I'm going to sew round, keeping the edge of the fabric lined up with the edge of the quilt. Let's have some stitch length on there. Sorry, wrong one. Silly Billy. Right, so I've shifted the needle to give me a slightly bigger seam allowance. Sewing up to the corner, stop about three inches from the corner. This is where I would make a tiny weeny nick in the fabric. The nick in the fabric is actually level with the edge of the quilt. And it's on that nick I'm going to fold the material and bend it at a neat right angle round the corner. Now I'm just using a single binding. I'll show you and explain about a double binding in a moment. Having formed the triangle, it pays to flop it forwards and finger press, flop it backwards and finger press. So we've got this little triangular edge. You're now going to sew right up to the triangle. The triangle is a no-go area. You will not sew one stitch beyond it. You will not go beyond it at all. If you can fix it at that stitching, stop. But do not go into the triangle. Raise the presser foot. Turn the work round. We're now going to flop the triangle back over again. And this is where I call this the Carol Lane corner, because I always used to start the other side of the triangle, but in actual fact, you don't have to. It was a lady called Carol Lane who explained that to me. You learn constantly when you're teaching. I like to drop the needle down because it starts the stitch, and then you're going to proceed. So sewing over that triangle corner and keep going. So let me take it out and show you what it now looks like. So there is my binding, and when I fold it back, it instantly mitres. Let me do that again. So there it is, fold it back, and it mitres. And it mitres an absolute treat. And when you turn it to the other side, you'll find it'll also mitre on the back very easily. And you can just turn the raw edge under. So one way of doing the binding is to take a straight strip, sew up to the corner, stop about three inches from the corner, fold it, go round, and then you'll get that mitered corner. Now, there are some quilting judges who like the mitered corner to be sewn up. I know Jane, uh, Jane Rillison's one of them. I'm not over fussed about having this sewn up, but I am fussed about having mitres on my binding and a nice straight binding, not one that is a sharp with a good corner, not one that is dragged around the corner. Now, the problem when you use double binding, and let's come to that because I have a sample knocking around here somewhere, is for those of you who are fans of using your binding folded double, is when you get to the corner here, you need to allow enough in the fold so that when you fold it back again, it will mitre nicely without going rounded. If I'm not explaining that terribly well, let me try again. When you come up to the corner of your binding, you need to make sure that in that fold, when you fold it round the edge, you allow for the fact that the binding's got to go up and beyond and to the other side. So don't be too tight when you turn the corner. Leave a little bit extra because it's the inside of the binding that's got to go the furthest distance. And that is why so many people who use double binding have these quilts with this terrible corner where it's all dragged round and it's into a roundiness. Your binding should have a nice good point to it. Now, some people quite like to use bias binding for bi binding their quilts with, and that's perfectly acceptable. So if you use something like the Clover 25mm bias binding thing, all you would need to do is to sew along one of the creases, and then you've got something to follow. And you can do it in exactly the same way as I showed you with the yellow strip of fabric I used earlier. But it's doing the curves that can be problematical. When you come to do a curve, you absolutely 100% have to have your fabric on the bias. And any curve, 
needs to have its fabric on the bias. So you've got a curve in your quilt, cut the fabric on the bias. If it's got straight edges, it needs to be just straight cut. When you come to do it on the curve, it's joining the ends together, which sometimes can be problematical. And the same method of joining your straight strips can be used for joining your curved strips. Begin your binding by leaving a little tail, an extra bit. Bring the binding round from the other end, open the little tail out, and you lay the final end of the binding inside the little tail, fold it over and stitch straight past. So it is fold a little bit over on the starting end, take the final end, tuck him inside, fold him over and sew straight past. Now binding something that's round is pretty simple and you will get a nice rounded effect when you're done. Binding something that's got a slight angle to it isn't difficult because as you take the binding round, you can fold the binding. So she looking for a bit of binding to demonstrate, tear that off there. You can fold the binding at an angle as you go round the corner so it can actually be folded at that same triangle. Your problem with doing binding is the inward bits, is the bits like on this heart shape. Here we've got two hearts that were cut out using the easy heart template have been bound and it's the bit there that can be problematical as indeed with the Christmas tree skirt. Those of you who made this, the outside edge is easy, the binding around the middle is a little difficult and indeed with the Dresden plate. So all of these, easy round there, it's that bit that's difficult. So how is that bit done relatively easily? The way that you do the inward piece on your binding, and whether you're using double binding as I've got on this initial sample, or whether you're using single, is you need to take the binding into the crack, the center, and you have to drag it round. Let me show you. Before I do show you though, just assure you that you've got to cut your fabric out on the bias. It absolutely must be bias cut. If you're worried about cutting out fabric on the bias, remember you can use the line on your ruler. So any particular ruler, which I did have earlier, which has gone walk about, there it is. I'm just using the small ruler. We've got the much bigger ruler on the show. If you put the 45 degree line of your ruler down the edge of the fabric, this will put your ruler at 45 degrees to the material, making it easy to cut your bias strips. If the ruler's not quite long enough, just slide it down and continue the cut. Once you've got the cut, rather than wobbling your weight right the way along the entire thing, fold the fabric over and chop off whatever you happen to wish to use. I very often use a one and three quarter inch strip when I'm doing single binding or a two and a half inch strip when I'm doing double binding. So I'll cut a one and three quarter inch strip off. The binding gets joined together. We have done this many times on the shows, so I'm hoping you will remember how you join the binding together. Now, when, it's when it comes to doing that little inlet here, that you take the edge of the binding, put the edge of the binding to the edge of the work, and it's getting it round there, you have to pull it round. So let me see if I can do it on this machine. It won't be so easy because I haven't got exactly the right foot on this particular machine. Let's put the needle back in the middle again. There we go. Really easy to move the needle on this machine. Right, taking the edge of the binding, keep the edge of the binding to the edge of the fabrics, and you're going to work round. Now remember this is live television, and on live television you never try and do tricky techniques. So keeping all the edges together, round we go, round we go, round we go, into the very point, stop on the very point, drop your needle down, raise the press of foot, and then you've got to take the binding round. You don't want to sort of, you've got to drag it round a bit. You can nick it afterwards, but just go carefully, because if you don't go carefully, then you will get a bit of a muddle. So pull it, this is why it has to be on the bias, and you're so glad it's on the bias, because you can ease it. Right, that will take it to there. Okay, and just cut the threads. So that is how we go inwards, going right into that, and then you'll find you can take your binding back up and over, and it actually will mitre on the front, nice and tidily, and then you can sort it out on the back. So binding can be done relatively simply. These inner curves are a bit more of a kerfuffle. You could always leave a bit and do that bit by hand. But while we're on the subject of binding, what about doing something really silly with binding if you've got some binding left? 
and you've got the bias binding maker. Why not make bunting? I promise bunting. Bunting or a banner. If you're going to make bunting or a banner, very, very quick and very simple because summer is a coming and we need to make, I'm looking for me 30 degree template, there's one. 30 degree template, two layers of fabric. You can either use the full size of template or part of it. Draw round the template. So lay it on there and draw either side of it. Draw, draw, draw. Stitch inside the drawn line. So we're going inside here, inside here, inside here, inside here. So you get uppy downy, uppy downy. Fastest way to do it is to stitch all this side first because you can jump along the end, turn it round and do the other side rather than mess around. When you've done that, all you're going to do then is cut it up using pinking shears or a pinking thing on the rotary cutter. And you will have bunting. Take your bias binding strip, which you can make using the clover bias binding maker. Just pull it through there, press it. As you pull it through and press it, it folds beautifully. Take the bunting, lay it inside the bias binding maker, fold it over, and we'll give my bit of bunting that I made that's hanging behind me away, stick it underneath the sewing machine, straight stitch all the way down the edge there, and you have just made very quick bias binding. And then you can cut the next one up, stuff it under, stuff it under, stuff it under. So there you go, 30 degree template, bias binding. Use the hexagon and make up all sorts of super things. Dresden plate, fabulous fabric, what a glorious mess I have made. You have made a mess, but yes. it's all right because I will tidy it all up. Look at all of this. <laughs> Thrown on the floor. That's what you were talking about with those edges then. Yes, yes. That would you be see? amazing on a round tabletop, it would. wouldn't it? But I've, I was very pleased with this. Even actually got a ping from the husband. I absolutely yes, I think love that fabric. That was fabric. Super. I like the Dresden plate around the edge there. Um, it wasn't that difficult to do. Um, and when it's bound in the remainder of the fabric that came with it, it's going to look absolutely super. I'm so very that impressed with that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yep. What do you do with all these finished pieces? How many quilts <gasps> have you got at oh, home? Jenny. Can we um, have a quilt sale? A quilt sale? Yeah. I have a cupboard that is, oh, probably seven, eight feet high by seven foot wide, stuffed with mainly unfinished things. I feel a summer quilt sale coming on. No, because I, I need them. Of I need them for the show. Because, yeah. you know, every time I make one, we then have another show and I have to show it again. So I tell you what is coming up probably on the next quilting classroom, the circular thing over there, which was actually made by Linda Onions, the green thing, we are this going to do amazing. something like that on the next quilting classroom, which I believe is going to be in July. That's like a I didn't make that. I love Linda it. Onions, Linda Onions made that. So I should be using Incredible. her PDF. Right, so coming up is that. And that would work fantastically with these fabrics there. Because they're the bolds, yes, aren't they're they? The bolds, the textured they bolds. Well. Yep. Brilliant. Yep. Yep. Now, we, do, we did have a lot of uh, sellouts in the show, but we still got the bias tape, but it's right. really, really busy. So we're just going to um, give you the details of that really, really, really popular. Um, incredibly easy to use. Yes, it is. Surprisingly. Yes, it's really, and it really does stick. It really does stick. So you just pe peel off the backing paper peel and then the it's got the fuse where... Fuse it on. Somewhere I have a piece thrown on the floor here. And that was just with the clover arm. And you just fuse it on. And it, it is, it is, I'm having to, would you actually, you really have to actually Ooh. pull it off quite, quite firmly. Come on, you. Oh. Right. So it does stick. Perfect. And once it's stuck. I, I think mean, that's brilliant. And, and if I was to do that, could I then use it again if I wanted I'm to? I'm not sure about that. I could sew it on though, couldn't I? You could sew it on. Do you want to try? Now I've got the clover oh, on the clo Yeah, yeah, why it not? It won't matter on the formica table. You might get two goes at it. Yes, yeah. yes, you would get two goes at it. There's just a little bit left. Uh, but incidentally, for all the viewers watching, do not use your clover iron on the table, please. It needs to be ironed on an ironing board or on some piece of something that is not. Like a towel or something. Like it does not damage the table, fortunately. Of course. Always take precautions when ironing. Uh, <laughs> like, don't ever iron. That's my main <laughs> And this is for patchwork and quilting. Absolutely. When you have to iron. Yeah, only iron when you've got to iron. Yes. That's what I say. Yep. Uh, now, on your screen is the bias fusible tape. Uh, make sure you check out Basket for that. Uh, now, the no sue, no sue, no sew. No sew. Sue, you can have this. No sew fusible spray. 
Really, really, really busy for that one. There we go. Sorry, I took it out of, out of the way, yes. didn't I? Uh, really busy for this one. And Jen, this is something that you've highly recommended. I, yes, I would highly recommend it. I'm trying to find my Dresden plate, which is a giveaway. So somewhere in here I have a little Dresden plate down, which I did specially to give away. I think that's super stuff. You keep eulogising about it. Okay, I will do. You get 250 bunting. mil, and if you're in the club, it's just 899-404-777. Next up is the 505. Now, that's different to this, yes, isn't it? Yes, completely different. That is a fusible one for mm -hmm. applique. That is for quilting. The right. two are not. The two do not work. You do not want to use this for your quilting. Right, so just for applique. Just for applique. This is for craft use, it's for applique. It is a very different glue to that stuff. Okay, so this one is for your quilting. So if you are yep. quilting, you need this, 406-010-899. If you're in the club, if you're not in the club and you'd like, oh, 719 even. Where did I get 899 from? Just pluck that out of thin air. If you're not a member of the club and you'd like to take advantage of those price tags, give us a call, 09056 480 480 to do that. And then... Add your order to it, and you also get ten pounds to spend here um, on any further purchases at Create and Craft in a voucher form um, when you become a member for the first time. Next up is the oh, let's go to this the fabric. This is like really busy. For that one. These are gorgeous. They are absolutely superb. I was only sent one of the colorways. I think it's this one. Which is that one? But that purpley one and the bluey one. Trouble is, Magic Hands has to put all these things back together again. You see, but I don't see. Look, it's got those trees in it in blue, and that one, Gorgeous. and that mottledy one. I love this one. It's really seventies. Yes, isn't it? I just yeah. so I so I, I havered over using that. And did I want to use it? Did I want to? When I, mean, I know I've used that one, I have plans for that one. I got plans. Uh, I got plans for that one. And you you don't want to sort of you look at your stash and you think, I really 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 don't want to use that. Right. So who's going to get the bunting? Well, we've only a minute left, so let's pick. Bunting's going to, banner if you're in the USA, it's going to go to Jackie Williams in Carmarthenshire. That's right. Well, well done, Jackie. Jackie. You can have some bunting. Incidentally, there's room for a bit more because there's a bit un unstitched on there, so I'll send, give you the other piece I've started to make. There's all sorts of goodies back here, I tell you that. Jen, when are you coming back? I don't think I'm back till July with the quilting classroom. July? I know, I know. Well, I get a holiday next week. I'm going on holiday Where with, are you going? with the husband. We're going to French France. French yes. France? Yes. Actual French yes. France. Yes. Whereabouts? Uh, Normandy somewhere. How oh, lovely. Britain. It's somewhere. We've got a cottage somewhere. On a little, little cottage on the coast where I will veg out and walk and he will go sleep. Well, we're here all the stories about that. Thank you so much, Jen. It's been amazing, amazing having you. Here's Ben to tell us what else.